Hello, happy new year, people. Okay, uh, today's topic will be looking at uh, the importance of knowing your objective. Okay, what are you buying? Why are you buying a certain property for? Why are you looking at a certain area? And if that's really uh, your, you don't really have a choice and you must buy that property or that area, do you actually understand the consequences of doing so? And what exactly are the consequences? How does it affect you? Uh, a few years down the road. Definitely in Singapore, we are looking at minimum holding period of three years. And even if you buy something and then you regret, as long as you don't want to pay sellers and beauty, which is really quite hefty, uh, 12%, 8%, 4%, even 4% at the last year, is quite painful. For $1 million, is 40K. $2 million, is, $2 million sale is really 80K. Uh, and definitely not something that we should be belittling. And then, okay, so uh, I got, uh, why are we talking about this? Because recently I have uh, quite some clients, uh, they, uh, not just one, uh, I mean, I mean those of you who are listening, uh, you are not just the only case. Uh, there's quite some, I'm just going to uh, use some of this case study to really elaborate on uh, the, the dilemmas that, that quite some of the buyers nowadays are facing. Uh, you know, they sell the house, yes, uh, you sell the house, uh, uh, is um is on a market high, you're happy, but then you realize that if you are trying to enter, especially especially the resale market, you will realize that sellers there are also doing the same thing. Everyone wants to sell high. Everyone knows that the market is doing well and also wants to sell high. And hence, uh, are you putting yourself and the chopping board for for the sellers to to really get their profits from la. or maybe if they, they feel that is the case maybe they may not be getting profits they may actually be trying to stop loss cut loss uh, later I'll show you why and then um, okay so so some of these case studies quite interesting because uh, I think quite a lot of you will be facing the same problem also and that's why I decided to bring it up because we have um, families especially they are buying for you know near school uh, or maybe they, are, they want to live near parents or, or maybe if it's near work uh, so they really need to they feel that they really need to stay in a certain area because they want to minimize the transport and which is very fair uh, in fact a lot of people uh, they, 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 they sell their houses in the northeast uh, they want to buy back in the office because it's they're used to that area already. Uh, whereas last time, uh, 20 years down the road, there were people buying office, see our world. Uh, but now it's a very different story. Now people actually want to go to Pongo. <laughs> on, uh, that's the funny thing. Uh. And okay, so anyway, uh, back to this. Uh, this is so basically, this is why we are talking about this topic today. And uh, as usual, a disclaimer, whatever I'm going to share today is just based on my own personal point of view, my own research and my calculations. And yes, today there will be quite some calculations to show you the real life example of how things can turn out if you end up buying the wrong property that is not uh, going to be helping you in the long run in terms of the financial point of view. Okay. And so, uh, quite a lot of people will be looking at, oh, you know, buying near MRT, then it must be, uh, is, and nothing can go wrong la, because it's so, so easy. Ma. You buy near MRT, next time common got demand. Ma. Yeah, that one, I, I won't deny. There is definitely demand. There is no good, definitely going to be a uh, attention from people who are looking to, to live near the MRT for various reasons, whether it's for work or for families, a lot of different reasons lah, because basically it's convenient ma. and then we uh, also maybe safety wise accounting uh, for young little kids that are it's very very common and then we take a look lah, for we have two developments one is the glades and then one is Grandview park both are right beside tanamera mrt so i think less than one minute you can reach mrt so definitely we can't really dispute that both of them are basically in almost the exactly same uh, location. And then we look at the different price performance of these two condominiums. Uh. We have uh, Wendell Park doing, going up in this direction, whereas you have the glitz. Uh, if somebody choose to buy the glitz in 2017, uh, when Wendell Park was launched, which is 2017 Q1, if somebody choose to buy the grades in state what actually happened was somewhere around here and this was the period where the grades was launched 
which was uh, at the previous market pick lah, where TDSR was introduced. Okay, or rather basically outright just soon after TDSR was introduced. And then you see what happened actually. Okay, so it's actually quite similar to where we are right now uh, on a market high. So if you buy the wrong thing, not say, not to mention that, uh, not to say exactly that, or you know, everyone who bought any property in 2013 pick up, lose money. Uh, we, we do have examples of uh, certain developments uh, that actually made money even during buying at the pick up. Uh. So that is not true. That if you buy at the market pick, of course, majority of them who choose to buy or rather make an emotional buy because of whatever hearsay or convenience factor, they definitely are, are, are going to be facing a hard truth. Uh. And then these guys who are exiting from the glitz and are basically mostly uh, trying to cut their loss. Uh. Okay, so this those guys who, who entered the glaze the grade in 2017 Q1, if you look at today, uh, 2022, uh, they are basically looking at the 148 PSF loss. How do I calculate this? Uh this is uh 1316 PSF, and then this is where it started 1464 at 2017 Q1. And whereas on the other hand, Grandio Park, we have uh over here we have one three one three nine three over here started around launch average price at one three nine three. And today where it is, it is at one six six two PSF. So I think the difference it is actually a difference of profit difference of three hundred and sixty nine PSF. And then if I take these two together, this is a plus, this is a loss, and then if I Look at the spread between these two, and up uh, is a difference of five hundred and seventeen PSF, which is not a lot in this case. But if you choose to buy a one thousand square feet unit, isn't this a difference of five hundred and seventeen thousand? dollars at least half a minute easily eh? so if you make the wrong decision basically it's the same location ma. both of them are right beside MRT but you have one guy just uh, one guy actually making a lot of money the other guy facing a loss eh? we did the same span of about 5 years because today we are 2022 Q1 ma, and then this one is 201 7 Q1 ma. so just nice about 5 years but we look take a look and then now uh, uh, okay, so the glitz was TOP in 2016. This one TOP in Q3 2020. Not much of a difference, but four years a lot. Of I don't think the swimming pool is going to be looking too shabby, uh, the kind of difference. And then actually, the glitz is a much bigger block, land plot. I think it's, it is actually still quite nice. If you drive past the, the area, you realize that actually the glitz is quite outstanding. Quite, quite outstanding to the eye, that kind of development. Uh. Both of them are also about 700 plus. So the characteristics is quite similar. The start lease date also only three years apart. Not much of a difference actually. But why is it like this? Okay. But today, that is not our focus. They want, if you are interested, you can pay me to find out why. Uh, if not, we are going to be spending a lot of time over here. The main thing we want to focus on is the next page, which is quite a lot to digest because it's a lot of numbers, especially those of you who are not very savvy in terms of numbers. Okay, and then we'll take a look if based on a $2 million budget, if somebody entered this guy over here, the grades last time in 2017 versus the other guy in Grandio Park, how will it turn out? Okay, so last time, of course, the LTV was 80%, but assuming, I want to put it like, uh, I want to assume that, you know, it's, it's similar to today's circumstances because we are trying to picture if we end up making the wrong decision today, versus if we uh last time la. so we are trying to make the circumstances a little bit more similar and then we look at five years holding period both of them with like what i mentioned two million dollars budget and then imagine today 2022 you buy something and then hold for five years and then you end up one like this one like this okay like what we see just now so for example the grade somebody put two million dollars okay so this guy also when they are two million dollars and then if Based on the average PSF, uh, maybe I'll get the size of this, 1366 square feet. And then, because the under part at that point was a lower PSF, it was end up 1,400 
and 35 uh, square feet. Okay, around there, are assuming both are working on a $2 million budget. My steam duty is the same, the coffee is the same. And then we look at the grades first. Okay, uh, based on the this amount, 75% loan, we should be looking at paying around uh, 1 or 1.8% per annum. We should be looking at around 5,000 plus per month in terms of monthly installment. I'm not very concerned about principal because if, if, the property price stays the same, then this is basically saving. So I'm not really bothered about this. I'm more concerned about this because this is money that's going to be paid to the bank and it's not coming back. Uh, then you have maintenance fee uh, because since this is a big unit, like this is going to be 400 plus. Probably tax media I put it a little bit lower than 150 per month. Renovation, uh, it is 2016 development. So if you buy in 2017, maybe somebody used before, you may still want to do a little bit of renovation and it's still quite a big unit. So I would say maybe I'll put 50K. I think today's standard is easily 80 to 100K, but now why don't we just put 50K? So active, okay, what do I mean by active loss? That means uh, this one per month interest, my interest is running. This one is running, this one is running. Okay, whereas this one is one time, one time. So assuming this one, I add this one, this one together. So these three together. And then I have five years times 12 months. This over five years, I actually I lose $168,000 just to stay in the goods, just to stay in the condo that uh, um, maybe doesn't appreciate. But unfortunately, in this case, the goods actually dropped by 148 PSF on average. And then if we take the size, we times it together with the PSF, we are facing a loss, capital loss of $200,000. And if I add all these together, $168,000, and then I add the reno, I add this one, I add this one, okay, all I add together, I'm facing $400,000 loss. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, oh, you know, 50K, ma, I put in renovation, maybe my, my next buyer will buy from me. Okay, let's face it. Okay, if you, you are the kind that really take care of the house. Maybe there's a chance that you can claw back part of the 50k. But I've seen quite a lot of people. Uh, I sell their house. Uh, they tell me I renovate three, four years only there. Eh? But they spend like 70, 80k. Eh? But wow, if I'm the buyer, I wouldn't pay for the rent only eh? <laughs> because they never take care of the house. So there is no guarantee that. Uh, even if you put in the money renovation, oh, after five years, of there's no guarantee that end of the next buyer is going to be paying your rental for you. So you can see in this case, if you have capital loss from your from a development that doesn't seem to be able to preserve its value for various reasons, then you also have the active loss over just five years and also your uh, upfront causes. You're facing right from the start, just five years are. Uh, you're facing almost half a million dollar loss. On the other hand, if you're buying an appreciating asset like this, uh, till now, how long will you be appreciating? I, I'm not exactly clear, uh, but I really don't think it's going to be lasting very, for much longer. Uh, I don't think it's really going to be appreciating forever because after all, this is a leasehold condo and in a high supply area. So I really, not too optimistic that this bull run is going to be continuing for too long. Uh. And then based on this one, this is a slightly bigger unit since it's same but lower PSF. Uh, of course, this is this was actually a new condo at that point, so it was a progressive payment. Uh, but to make progressive payment is a little bit more for those of you who are not very familiar. I I don't think we are going to be talking about this today because it's not easily digestible. Okay, so we are just assuming that okay, maybe some uh I put some expenses out because some people maybe they go rent. But if they stay with parents, they're going to be saving a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Uh. Maybe the three years plus they don't rent. It's going to be saving maybe 100K. Okay? Assuming maybe you have a 3K per month kind of rental or maybe even lesser, then maybe, of course, you're good. Uh. But never mind, to make it this simple, I copy the whole thing, I paste over here. Okay, so assuming, obviously, a new launch is not going to be having so much expenses, but never mind, I just put here. Uh. Okay, so everything assuming that is the same active loss again okay it's the same but on the other hand here there's a capital gain for appreciation because just now we see on the graph there is a 369 psf gain and then based on this square feet this size of the unit we are looking at maybe 
uh, capital gain of 500 plus thousand dollars. You may be thinking, what's your actual no 500 plus thousand dollars? I don't know, I did not just show you, la, but we just keep in mind. Oh, yes, uh, all these laws are uh, is before agent fee, yeah, uh, because agent fee at the end of the day, uh, is really depending on the seller selling price. So that one will that one will will uh, count separately, la, but for for both, uh, to be fair, this one I don't count, this one I don't count first, la. so both sides don't count. And then we take a look. No? You have this one. Oh, uh, this one is the gain. Ma. Then minus the causes. Ma. Then you still left with $273,000 profit. Of course, you only start staying in this condo for like one and a half years plus. La, because uh, you Q2, Q3, uh, 2, 2, 2, then, then TOP. Ma. But so if you stay for one and a half years, uh, you still get the profit $200,000 dollars net. So at the end of the day, uh, the five years difference, right? You have this guy profiting 200 plus thousand, this guy losing almost half a million dollars. The difference between these two choices is not just 200 plus thousand dollars or 400 plus thousand dollars. It is this one, a positive minus this, a negative. You have a difference of $761,000. $761,000 in five years kind of difference there. Eh? Just for two million dollars property, eh? <laughs> I think this is really a huge sum for people to really think about it. Ah, uh. it's seven hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. I don't know how, how many of us can earn <laughs> in five. That means each year you save this amount of money. That means every month you have to earn twelve thousand dollars to make up for this kind of money. Eh? How, how many people? How many people? Let's just say per pack uh, can, can earn this kind of money. La. We don't talk about household. La. So is this a significant kind of difference if you make the wrong choice today? And if in even if so, you all these are we have a factor in accrued interest from your CPF. Accrued interest, yeah. Like some people say, oh, you know, it's still my money, la. but it's money that could have been given to you by the government if you didn't touch the money. So could the money have been given to you? Extra money for you for your retirement? Yes, ma. Uh, of course you can. But the thing is, the if you use it and then use it for your sales proceeds, and your sales proceeds come back, you have to top up, and then you can use it back again. Yes, la. But money government could have given you that extra money, but end up now you top it out on your own. So there's a difference, uh. Okay, so you can see the main thing is if you don't really understand, don't worry. This one, uh. If you if you con if you consult me, of course I will I will help you settle all this. But the main thing is here is you can see the difference between the appreciating condo and the depreciating condo for a two million dollar budget. You can have almost seven hundred plus thousand dollars difference, and that is really quite substantial. I feel okay. So for the Bendel Park residences, there are people who already profit seven hundred plus thousand dollars. Okay. And uh, if you take this one times this one, this is the purchase price last time. It's about $2 million or so. So it's actually quite possible. And we are looking at people who are still not selling yet. Uh. So there could be people who are having more equipment gain. Uh, and none of them lost money. 54 of them made money. And then uh, in case you are wondering, uh, this doesn't mean that or you know buy MRT confirm can make money. A new one doesn't make that is not my message. Huh? Uh, I'm not telling you that you know confirm as my new 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 condo. That is not my message. In case for those of you watching my channel, you realize that I really mentioned a lot of new condos cannot buy. So that is not my intention. For those of you wondering why condo park can still make money, this guy was a resale, this guy is a com is a new guy. This one is a resale. The new guy selling cheaper than how is it? <laughs> this is pretty much a no-brainer. But today, nowadays, you have seen we are seeing a lot. Uh. The resale guy is here. The new guy is somewhere here, like, on top, eh, way above it. Eh. You have a few hundred PS and gap. Eh. So how far are you gonna be stretching? Okay, so I think that gives you the hint. Uh on the other hand, we have another area, uh, this condo, five to seven minutes away from MRT, walking distance. Uh, which is still quite considered an MRT project. Uh. And then from 2012 to now, drop almost 34%. Just now, the one only dropped, I think, 10%, 10 plus percent, 14%. This one is more than twice the amount. 
So does it mean that MRT is a uh, near MRT is really a guarantee factor? And then whereas you have this other guy, this guy, uh, quite old, also quite a while really, quite definitely old, uh, more than 20 years old condo. But 10 to 12 minutes walk away from MRT there. And then still making this kind, still gaining today. You see, after the pulling measure, still fighting strong, still going, 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 going up. Even today, it's still going up. But if you ask me, if the very strong cooling measure come in, will it drop? I think definitely it will drop. Maybe it will hit this and then stagnate a little bit and then eventually it will start moving again because this is a fundamentally strong property. Okay, but uh, how do we spot fundamentally strong property? That one you have to you have to can't find me uh. <laughs> Maybe you won't be able to. Uh, of course, I will find out for you if if uh, if you decide to engage me, and then we take a look example for these two guys. They are this one is near Banco MRT. This guy is near Kovo MRT. They are definitely definitely within two to three minutes less than that to walking distance to MRT. And then you take a look uh, for this guy, uh, Cover MRT. Uh, last time after cooling major, you realize it's like this. Okay. The, now, uh, quartz is pretty much the same level. Of course, this may be a one time. This may also be a one time. So maybe this range is around there. This one still come to here. This one is the usual range. So maybe still come to here. So is this a property that you will want to get yourself in? So does it remind you of the grades that we've been looking at just now? Okay. If for those of you who are, uh, I'm not saying this only apply to resale. Uh, that this can also possibly apply to new one. Uh, because remember, the grades was a new condo. This was the launch mark. And then tune up, you see, it doesn't mean that all will make money. But all new ones will make money. That's not, definitely not what I'm trying to drive across today. Okay, so at the end of the day, we need to know very clearly what is our objective for buying uh, and then the consequences of buying that property. And also, does your die die stay in that location? Is it because of schools or is it you really like the lifestyle of that place or you're buying the condo just to enjoy? Or is find your fi own financial future more important to you? Are you trying to secure a better financial future? At the end of the day, why are we working so hard for? Why are we working going to office 8 to 12 hours a day, working, working so hard. What are we working for? And then if family time is important to us, are we working our, basically our ass off to finance the, the lifestyle? And then end up with a, maybe in just now in that case, a 761k difference. Okay, could this money, could you have actually quit your job uh, maybe just one just one half financing the the, the working working for for the family what else the other guy the other person um yeah make the right help to make help to stay sane and make the right decision uh, and stay at home and maybe look after the kid uh, and still uh, you will still be make, definitely avoiding these kind of differences uh. so is there a trick off for sacrifices i have clients who are looking uh maybe example in the northeast or east, but then they realize that uh, the opportunities are not there. So, if you ask them to go to the west, they say sell. But at the end of the day, did they uh, change their mind? Uh, yes, I would say yes. I have, I have clients who, who end up uh, getting into maybe the west side or maybe some of the areas that we see opportunities in. And that to them is a matter of delayed gratification. Okay, for those of you who, who don't really understand, basically, uh, delay what they want. Because let's just face it, a lot of people nowadays, they want to stay in office, they want to stay in peace. But are there opportunities there? Or not? And then if, if not, are they willing to sacrifice? Are they willing to maybe stay with parents? Are they willing to maybe rent and then put the money where the opportunities are? Okay? At the end of the day, you need to know uh, what are your priorities? And then are you able to accept the consequences? Maybe five to 10 years down the road, are you, do you want to buy a property that is stagnating? Or you want a property that is going down? Or you want a property that is constantly going up? Okay. Uh, if, if you know this, if you want to be like this, then you cannot afford to let your other 
if this is your number one priority, then you can afford to let your other uh, factors affect you. Well, whereas I have, uh, like what I mentioned, I have clients who delete gratification. They they also have problems with kids, uh, you know, having to tra having to having to travel quite far. But at the end of the day, they decided that financial future is more important for them. And then I respect their decision. And then uh, it is really not easy. Uh, but I, I appreciate that they 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 are thinking well for, for their financial future. And hence they decided to, you know, bite the bullet and then end up uh going on the more financially logical kind of uh, strategy la. and then uh, definitely uh, happy to say that they are already sitting on five to six figure profits in just a few months i think uh kudos to them i think they really deserve the, the rewards for that and then i'm looking forward next time to help them uh, cash out on their profits and eventually uh, maybe help them to uh, settle down where, wherever they want to stay in for the long run okay so uh yep that's all we have for today just remember uh what is your objective for buying and also the circumstances the consequences at the end of the day uh are you able to live with it uh, knowing that you know you make maybe maybe whether you make the right choice or make the wrong choice the uh, buying houses is definitely not as simple as uh going to the supermarket and buy vegetable, you know, choose this, choose that. There are a lot more factors to consider. Okay, so I think that's all we have for today. And then see you guys. Bye-bye. Happy New Year.